welcome back to Hutton Arena at Hamlin University as Community Hoops continues its coverage of the Pat Patterson Thanksgiving tip-off tournament. We have the Bracket B final pitting the St. Paul Central Minutemen against the East View Lightning. I'm Mike Peden, joined by Alex Nagel. And this will be a fun match. Central with an upset win yesterday over De La Salle to get here. East View took down Centennial methodically. I've got to tell you, Mike, this is the one matchup, the one game that I've really been looking forward to. First time these two teams have played each other in two years. And that was at the state tournament. A lot of these a lot of these players on both of these teams, particularly Eastview, I'm sure have to have a little revenge on their minds. Well, those two teams actually played each other uh, later that calendar year in the Hopkins Holiday Tournament. And in that game, Willie Taylor was ejected. I remember that. I think, I, yes, I definitely and remember Tom that. Tom Gunderson had to coach the remainder of that game. Yep, I remember that. So let's take a look at the starting lineups. We'll begin with the visiting Central Minutemen by virtue of the jersey color. Betsy McDonald will get the start along with Shade Chapman, Genvante Hill, Marlia Guerra Edwards, and Maya Cyrus. Genvante Hill, always a player to watch. She had took control of the game with De La Salle. You never know when she'll break out, and that's what makes her so dangerous. Sade Chapman had a solid game yesterday as well. Eastview, it's Alex Beckman, Amanda Beckman, Jenna Doctor, Hannah She, and Amber Mayer getting the start as they did yesterday. Jenna Doctor took control of things for Eastview, which led to their coast over Centennial, but any of their three captains can play the ball quite well. well you just got to love that senior trio for Eastview. The two Beckman sisters and Jenna Doctor, just so solid and so experienced. Central warring white, Eastview warring black. Bracket B final underway as we continue our kickoff of the 2010-2011 season and we start with a jump ball. Reach up here. And Central this time scoops it cleanly. That's Shade Chapman. She had a big game yesterday. In fact, her and McDonald, both sophomores, but both showing a potential leadership that we could see later on. It's still a young Central team, though. Five of the players on Central's roster are new to the program. And it's stolen by Doctor, and it's stripped right back. Genvante Hill picks it up. With the white jerseys and the black stripes uh, from a distance, they look a bit like bow ties. <laughs> no wonder they look so short. Offensive foul against Central. Always like those uh, Eastview home uniforms, the blue and the, the black and the blue and white trim. Just look short. Not to mention that old school font on those home jerseys. Yeah. Has a bit of a lightning look to it as she's shot is blocked. I believe that was Garrett Edwards and Cyrus is going to get called for the foul. Sade Chapman with a block on that one. To the line is Amanda Beckman. Gets the front end and gets on the scoreboard. Sinks 
both. Two zip early. And an offensive foul on Eastview with the elbow. So let's take a quick look at the keys to the game while we have a break. For Central, it's going to be handle the changing defense from Eastview. Eastview doesn't like to stay in one formation and execute on offense as they did yesterday. Yep. For Eastview, they need to take care of the basketball. Well, pretty much any team, that's always the first step. They'll need to win the rebounding battle. Chapman may be young, but she's a presence inside. And just as I say that, she's going to the line and containing Genvante Hill, who's always a threat. Well, I think they'll, on that first uh, task he was trying taking care of the ball, they've got a good point guard to do that in Jen Dockers. So you see Amanda Beckman pick up her first foul. Today, Chapman with the front end. That's going to be a fu uh, fun battle to watch too, Mike. Amanda Beckman and Sade Chapman, who have very blanky athletic players going at it. The Beckman twins and Doctor, the three captains for Eastview, blocking foul on Central. 3.95 GPA, all three of them. All very bright kids, and they probably could all take me on on Jeopardy. <laughs> and yours truly as well. <laughs> Wheel of Fortune might be a different story. <laughs> or maybe for me to tell the truth. <laughs> oh, you're going back. <laughs> was it Bug Collier was the original host of that show? I, well, Gary Moore was the host of that for a long, long time. And didn't Joe Garagiola host it for a while? He could have. They're tied at two. Genvante Hill. Rips up and loses the ball to Alex Beckman. And she will not draw the foul, but she gets the layup. She was going up against McDonald. That's a mismatch there. Gara Edwards kicks out and no bucket from Raina Shero. Shero, the sixth man of Central's team, so to speak. Mayer, swish, wow. that's for three. I would think that would be Sam Mayer doing that. Not, her, not little sister Amber, but uh, she proved us wrong. Hill stops, pops, and draws the foul. And the one thing you'll see with Eastview and Central, they always bring big crowds. Yep. Very supportive of their teams. As you get a very sky-high look at Hutton Arena and all it has to offer is Genvante Hill. Yeah, I think one of the keys for St. Paul Central today, Mike, is going to be the play of Betsy McDonald, the point guard. She was very impressive yesterday. She certainly caught my eye. She'll need a big performance again today. Timeout with 15-22 remaining. Central trailing by three, 7-4. They have yet to get a field goal, but yesterday they had a huge game when they took down De La Salle. To put things in perspective, scoring 45 points in the second half, 34 in the first. Shade Chapman had a huge game. A little quiet in the first half. Turned on the afterburners in the second. Scoring 20 points. Genvante Hill had 14 in the end of one and added six more to get 20 points as well. A very balanced attack from St. Paul Central as they took down De La Salle. We'll talk a little more about Eastview on the next break. Alex Beckman, she's blocked by Shero. But Mayer is there to pick it up. Eastview still holding on. And the Lightning fans cheering on the hustle.
Amanda Beckman draws the foul. I thought she was going to get called for a travel, but from this angle, it's a tough vantage point. Not sure who got whistled for that foul. I don't know if it was Chapman or perhaps uh, Mariah Kara Edwards. Beckman with four points, all from the line so far. Still early. Hill gets bumped, and Amanda Beckman will get tagged with the blocking foul. That's going to be her second. second. Yeah. So decision time here for head coach Paul Gates. And he'll make it. Sending in Cassidy Peterson. Peterson, Eastview's sixth man, so to speak. Dara Edwards kicks out to Cheryl, but she loses it to Alex Beckman, and she has numbers, and Hill bumps her. That will send Alex to the line. Alex and Amanda Beckman, both 5'11" senior guards. McDonald will take the bench. And Jada Jones will see her first action of the day. Alex Beckman gets both, and she's tied with her sister in points for four. And she breaks the tie with the steal and the basket. Timeout, St. Paul Central. And Willie Taylor's got to get his team settled down here, Mike. Well, perfect time to talk about Eastview and how they got here. As we mentioned, Eastview cruised over Centennial in a 60-39 win. Jenna Doctor got things off early and then finished with 21 points, the player of the game yesterday for Eastview. The Beckman twins quiet in half number one. Alex only scoring four. Amanda getting a few more points in the second half. Picked up nine. Really nothing fancy about Eastview's win yesterday. Just methodical. Just taking advantage of the Centennial miscues. And, no, they didn't need to put up a ton of points. Yeah, you know, it really was. And that just shows you the quality of play that they get from their head coach, Paul Gates. It's one of the reasons why I think Eastview has an excellent chance to make another deep run and have a crack at the state tournament as well. As you alluded to earlier, these two teams did play each other in the state tournament in 2008 in a match that St. Paul Central won over Eastview. And these two could go at it again. Central has White Bear Lake in their section and Woodbury to deal with, but if this Central team is anything like what we saw yesterday, if they're consistent and continue that discipline, I think they wanted a traveling call there, but didn't get it. They get the steal, though. Central starting sluggish. They did that, though, yesterday with De La Salle before clawing their way back. And if we see that from Central later on this season, they could make a run at the state tournament and perhaps qualify again after missing it the last couple of years. St. Paul Central, of course, the 07 and 08 Class 4A champions. Jump ball, possession arrow points to Eastview. Undefeated Central was in 06-07, winning all 32 of its games. Not really being challenged at all. Big block there by number 15, Rena Sherrill. I think the closest game they had was against Centennial in the Pat Patterson tournament. After that, it was bruise control. 07-08, a little more of a challenge. They went 28 and four, lost a couple times to Minneapolis South. First time by 20, second time by nine in the Twin Cities game. They met each other for a third time in the final. 
no three-pointer from Alex Beckman. And that's when Central turned the tide, winning 49-44 in what was marketed as a, a scoring frenzy type of final. It turned out to be a defensive fight. Bringing Willie Taylor his first pair of state championships as a head coach in Central. And we got a blocking foul on St. Paul Central, bringing Central their first back-to-back -back championships in school history. They won the state championship in 76 and 79 in the uh, old two-class format, but never won back-to-back. -back. I think that foul got assistant to number 12, Jada Jones. St. Paul Central. Oh, wow. and move by Jenna, Jenna Doctor. Doctor. Scored 20 yesterday. Gets her first pair today. 15-4. And we're reminded once again that there is most indeed a doctor in the house. We got a foul on Eastview. Called by Josh Schaff, who had a busy night last night, an assistant coach with Rosemount, works on the offense. He was at the Metrodome covering the 5A final between them and Wyzetter. He was working there. McDonald back in for the Minutemen. Draws the foul. And both teams out of fouls to give. And it's early, too. 12-21. Well, like we saw yesterday with De La Salle and with Central. Look at that, Genvante Hill. That was a beauty. It sure was. Of course, with an inbounds pass, as long as it touches a player, that ball's live, and you can go in and scoop it up. That's exactly what Hill did, yep. and Eastview didn't see it coming. Yep. And Alex Beckman tried to do a little too much there and lost control of the ball. And the Minutemen will get the rock back. So to finish up that point, uh, Schaff was assisting over at Rosemount. They lost to Wyzetta in the 5A final. Jokingly told me they cried. No, they really didn't. They had a lot of fun. It was a great game, and for them, a great experience. Garrett Edwards goes to Cyrus, out to Hill. Who finds Chapman traveling? She's walked, yep. Yeah. You know, I think she wanted to go up that time, the first time, and I think she was a little uncertain. Cost her to take that extra step. And she knows it, too. You could see that a mile out. Eastview up by nine. Alex Begman draws the foul. No, I think it's a foul against uh, Eastview. You're right. An right. offensive foul. Was it? Was it? It was. They got Beckman on the push. So both Beckman sisters now on the bench for Paul Gates. I'd like to mention it is tough from this vantage point where we're watching. Court side sometimes. Jenna Doctor can't get the jumper, and she cleans up her own mess. Yeah, Doctor made, made the central pee on that. That ball was hanging out there on that first shot. And Doctor got her own rebound and put it back up. Genvante Hill racing down. And another East View foul. Both teams in the penalty. And so this could be a long first half as we could see a lot of free throws. And this is where Central can gain some ground perhaps. Yep. And to get themselves focused, collected, well, have the clock stopped. You're down by 11. They need to settle down a little bit. Saw that last BB by Chapman, and she had a seemingly easy two to put up, and she traveled. Genvante Hill gets the front end. Hill not known for her free throw shooting, at least the first couple seasons. In yesterday's match, she was four for nine. She shot about 50%, and she's one of two here. In the game for Eastview, Jenna, uh, Claire Elliott. And we've got a foul against Central. And a she also in, in there as well, going to the line. For 
Minerva Whiteman. She, 5'11", junior forward, gets the bounce on the front end. Second free throw rims out. And it's still an 11 point lead for Eastview, but Central, they've been in this position before. Scramble for the ball. In the game is Lyric Williams for St. Paul Central. Just barely seen. And Genvante Hill can't get through to the basket. Picked up by Peterson, and now Doctor with it. Megan Ryan also in the game for the Lightning. Finds she, and she banks it in. Good passing there by Eastview, Mike. Three for she, and now Shero stops, pops, can't get it. Rebound Peterson. And she can't finish. That was a big chance, too. It was. She had an open look yep. with Central over pursuing. The one thing I notice about Eastview here, Mike, when you watch them, they generally, more often than not, make very good decisions for the ball. Good passes. Shero draws the foul. And with her being under the basket like that, that's probably the best thing that could have happened. Yeah, absolutely. Didn't have a great look, so she put her hands up. And something good happened for her. Yep, she drew contact. And Shero gets on the board. Might, go ahead. Vincent McDonald just checked back in for St. Paul Central. And Lily Williams will, Williams will go back out. Cheyenne Burton now in the game. Jones back in and Gara Edwards. I talked with Willie Taylor yesterday. when Central defeated De La Salle. Willie at first thought his team would start the weekend 0-2 and, and place in, play in the toilet bowls, he called it. Then when I talked to him last night, he said, well, now we have a chance to go 2-0. He was surprised, but it was a pleasant surprise that his team came through in the clutch against one of 3A's top opponents, and we've got an Eastview foul. And Eastview, with 10 fouls, that means Central is in the double bonus. Yeah, the foul is surprisingly piling up here for Eastwood. We see both the uh, Beckman sisters still on the bench for Paul Gates. And with the free throws, and you know, you would is think Jones. You, you would think that if Central were going to make a run to try to cut it down to single digits is only 10 right now. This would be the time to do it. Most of their points coming from the free throw line so far. Just one field goal. But they're taking advantage of the free throws they're being given. And that's what can keep you in the game. But they have to be careful too. Central's also in the penalty. Ooh, and here's a steal right here. And a foul. Not sure who that, somebody's a little shaken up there. That would be. The uh, foul was tagged against Central on Jada Jones. Megan Ryan looks like she got. She took a hard hit to the floor. Yeah, she did. But she's up and she appears to be fine. But Paul Gates will take her out as a precaution. With the injury to the head, they're going to have her get looked at, make sure she doesn't have any serious problems. Anytime you get a blow to the head, it hurts. And number three, uh, Paige Palkovich has checked in for Eastview now. Palkovich, a 5'8 junior. And so that will send Alex Beckman to the line in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Not a flagrant foul by any means, just no. Both players going for the ball, and uh, sometimes things like that happen. Good hard basketball, Mike. Beckman can't get the free throw, and Central 
Got the board, Genvante Hill is short with her shot. Central, again, just one field goal to start the game. Beckman in trouble, finds Mayer. Elliott now. Out to Alex, traveling call. 8.51 remaining in the first half, 20 to 11, and while Eastview, if you looked at the game tape, you'd think they'd be dominating, and they are in front, but Central is not out of this. Well, no, not by any means, and they definitely have picked up the intensity on defense, as we saw they forced Alex Beckman into a bad decision. They're young, but they're quick. McDonald with a tough shot, can't get it to fall. Ball just got out of her grasp. Yeah. And at the very end, that did not give her the proper positioning for a shot. Seemed like it hung there on the side of the rim forever. But Central maintains possession. There's no shot clock, of course, here. In a high school basketball. Different story when you get to the college level. McDonald finding Hill. Long two, no. Rebound, Gara Edwards. She can't put it down. Central just can't find the rim. And Sade Chapman, great awareness, ties it up, and the possession arrow points to Central, so effectively the Minutemen force a turnover. Alex Beckman wanted a, a call there, and so did head coach Paul Gates. Won't get it. McDonald turns it over, and Alex Beckman drives it up. Long two, no good from Beckman, and it's picked up. Well, that was Palkovich, and it's picked up by Hill. And Eastview not happy with the call. Alex Beckman will get tagged for the foul. You know, I think I think both she and Paul Gates have a good point there. I didn't see the contact or, or what the call was based on exactly. From but our angle, Genvante Hill, she was looking away from her defender. She lost control of the ball. She was trying to reestablish control. She wasn't moving in the direction of the basket. But we're not there. And that would be foul number what on Alex Beckman? Three, two? Don't have the official numbers. We'll verify that at the end of the first. But those fouls for Eastview are piling up. That's for you know, sure. She came out, so... I'm inclined to think that that might be number three. Genvante Hill makes both free throws. Well, Central getting it done from the free throw line. Ooh. Now we're going to have Eastview free throws. And Doctor, she push away Chapman there? Well, she, uh, Chapman got an inadvertent elbow from Doctor. Right in the nose. Things are getting a little uh, testy here all of a sudden. These are two schools that haven't played each other in a couple years. No big rivalry between the two. Doctor can't make the free throw, and that's been the big difference. He's viewing the one and one, missing the front end, and losing the ball by virtue of the rebound. Hill, stutter steps, weaves through, count it! And that foul is going to go on Doctor, I believe. Talk about a double whammy. Doctor misses the free throw, and she gets take for the foul. Yep. And Hill with a chance for a three-point play. We mentioned the keys to the game contain Genvante Hill. So yeah. far, she has nine of Central's 15 points. And Central finally breaks their field goal drought. And a she in for the ball game for Paul Gates. And the foul situation, especially for Eastview, is going to get very interesting as Genvante Hill completes a three-point play. They have a deep roster, as we can see on the bench. But if they have to go to that bench early, yep. That could be a huge boost for St. Paul Central, and although they're close. To <laughs> and they have. Number 42, Michaela Wilson also in now for East Eastview. It's a four-point game. Peterson, air ball. Yeah, it's amazing. This game started so much in favor of Eastview. 
I was a little worried that some, Central may have too big of a deficit to face, but now they've managed to, uh, to get themselves calmed down, and they've cut that deficit into a scant four points, Mike. We have a timeout with 727 left, and it's exactly the situation they faced yesterday with De La Salle. Yep. They're trailing, but they don't go away, and they've been staying in the game because of their work at the free throw line. At Eastview least. not converting on those free throws, especially in one and ones where Central can get the rebound, and Central doing the job so far for the charity strike. You know, in St. Paul Central, I think in this situation particularly, they've shown some very good composure. They've managed to regain themselves and they've gotten themselves back in the game. Now the question for Eastview is, with all those fouls that they've piled up, with the Beckman sisters on the bench, what do they do to uh, kind of regain their mojo here? That's a question I think only Paul Gates knows the answer to. Yeah, I, I certainly I, don't want to be. I know. I, I, I think you're right. I, it's, it's going to be interesting to see what they do now. There's still a lot of time remaining in this first half alone. Now, speaking of composure, how about this for composure? Last week, Willie Taylor had several functions to attend to. He took an exam at Metro State University, then traveled to a scrimmage that Central was hosting with a few other schools, and then he went and got married. Oh, wow. To Naomi Montgomery Taylor. It was 25 minutes late. But his wife was fine with that. Just They had a laugh about it, so no hard feelings. Well, if, that, if you want to get mentally tested, I suppose that's an awfully <laughs> good way to do it. And you want to know who his best man was? Who was that? Central Athletic Director Nate Galloway. Okay. Genvante Hill for three, no good. And the rebound goes right to Chapman. Great hustle by Central, that's why they're in this ball game. They're hustling, they're getting the little things and at some point those shots will fall if they do. Look out, no call on that. No call as Jones went up. Let's see if Eastview can stop this central run. It's a 7-0 run. I believe Central was down 29. And you know, without Beckman, the two Beckman sisters out there and Jen Bach are running things at the point, their half-court execution has suddenly gone awry. Michaela Wilson in the game for Eastview. Thought about a three, pump fakes, and takes a two that rims out. But it falls into the hands of Peterson. Mayer. Works away inside, no good. Rebound McDonald, looking for Chapman, overthrows Shade. A break there for Eastview perhaps, Mike. Chapman looked like she had uh, something in the works of an easy two there, but she got overthrown. Low scoring game so far, but a fun one to watch. Eastview just can't buy a bucket right now. Well, and you know, Elliott I, missed. And I think both teams have had their own sets of challenges to overcome here. You know, Central faced some adversity early on where they were looking at the double digit, staring them in the face. And now Eastview with all foul trouble that they've been uh, experiencing here with both veterans on the bench and Jen Doctor as well. Today overthrows Hill. Wilson to Mayer. No foul. Clean block by Chapman. I've got to think, if you're Willie Taylor and if you're the central team, you're seeing what's happened to Eastview since putting in the reserves, and you're thinking, if we stay like this, if we drive in the second half, we force Eastview to go to their bench, that's where we've got a chance. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I look at uh, Alex, or, or rather uh, Amanda Mayer out there right now. She's kind of uh, not playing in her comfort zone having to be out on the perimeter more. McDonald kicks out. This is getting ugly the last couple minutes. Well, Central definitely having some opportunities here but not being able to take advantage of them. I think those opening weekend jitters still coming into play, just shots not falling for Eastview. Central not on the same page yet. And they can't buy a break. They can't convert either. Hannah Shee, point blank layup, and it rims out. 
and we have a foul on Eastview on the rebound, and it's a double bonus. So two more free throws, and Chapman will go to the line. Foul was incorrectly assessed to Central on the scoreboard. But it doesn't matter. Both teams in the double bonus at this point. And Chapman's first shot is short. We've been stuck at 2016 for the last couple minutes. And Emily Young checks in for Eastview. Paul Gates has had to uh, go to his bench early and often here tonight. Probably a lot sooner than what he had expected or anticipated. Chapman gets the back end. She has three. Central just two field goals all game. And they're only trailing by three. It's because they've been to the free throw line so much. Well, sometimes you got to pick your chances where you can give them. They've been chipping away at the free throw line. Cheryl with the steal, and she draws another foul. More free throws coming. Well, the Hamlin men's basketball team, they might have to wait a while to practice. <laughs> uh, they're going to come in and uh, take a practice session in between the brackets B and C, so uh, you might have a chance to eat. Cheryl puts Cer the first one in. Certainly I'll need to get something into my tank for tonight. Yeah, I'd like to get something else other than hot dogs. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that just doesn't quite cut it for me. Yeah. Cheryl makes both. It's a one-point game. And all but four of Central's points have come from the free throw line. Now, if you told me Central would only make two field goals and be only down by one, never mind, they've got the lead. Genvante Hill with the steal and the layup. Well, if you told me that they'd be struggling like this from the floor and be up by one, yeah. I think you're crazy. Yeah, you know, uh, Eastview's got to be very careful here not to hit the panic button. Central up 21-20. And Amanda Mayer out of her comfort zone being forced on the perimeter now where she's more comfortable down low. Peterson out to Elliott. Eastview, they just look frightened, stunned out there on offense. Yeah. Just trying to find a shot, but yeah. they're resetting, being patient. Amber Mayer running the show right now for Eastview. Trying to get inside. And Central, finally, Mayer open on the revolving door and gets the long two. And that's exactly what Eastview needed. They needed a good offensive possession, pass the ball around, work it around, get the good shot, and they got it. Five points for Mayer. Eventually, the revolving door worked, and they found themselves open. Genvante Hill, tough shot in the paint, and it doesn't fall. Mayer with the rebound. All it takes is one shot, and all of a sudden, momentum can change. Peterson in trouble, but she gets rid of it, finds Mayer. Wilson out to Peterson again. Was looking for Emily Young, but she couldn't find her. And now here comes one of Eastview's reserves, Paige Palkovich, going back in. She'll sub for Elliott. And Gates, I don't think he's going to go with his three captains until the second half starts no, because of the foul situation. He's got to make do with what he has right now. Rebound and the putback by Emily Young. So until those, they got those last two buckets, Eastview went 14 straight possessions without scoring. Now Eastview is, I think, very lucky to be where they're at right now as this first half is basically unraveled for him. You could say that for both teams. Central, not quite on the same page, but they're still in this game because yeah. they're getting to the line. Eastview up by three with those last few buckets, but yeah. grinding through those 14 straight possessions without a bucket. Ooh, and that foul's gonna go on Chapman. And double bonus for Eastview, so we're gonna have free throws the other way. Well, usually basketball is a game of runs. One team makes one, and the opponent does. Yep. And we see Eastview shaping up for one. I'm not sure how many fouls that is on Chapman. 
And I think that would be number two, if my memory serves me correct. That will send Emily Young to the line. Bricks the first. Bessie, Bessie McDonald checks back in for the Minutemen. Young can't make either, and Eastview turns it over. That's going to be another interesting stat, those free throws for Eastview. Yep. Because that's one reason why Central's been in this game, if you look purely at the free throw numbers. Hill, she's just getting tough shots, no open looks. Oh, what a Whoa, are you, are you what? kidding are me? Are you kidding me? <laughs> My goodness. That was... Uh, Damana, Dema Damiana Willis. Willis. She just ripped it out and somehow puts it in. Peterson gets the bounce. What's going on here? <laughs> it's getting crazy here these last two or three minutes. Says our eagle eye called it Grand Theft Basketball. That was a textbook example of stealing <laughs> and scoring just out of sheer will. Hill gets to McDonald. She uses the dribble. Now she's got to get rid of it before the five seconds. In trouble. Yeah, she gets called for it. Too late. She was looking for the good pass, and then things all, all of a sudden started closing off her, and she had nowhere to go. And it's a three-point game. Sometimes you can be a little a little too selective, and she was there. Who would have thought that both teams would struggle as they have? Eastview going 14 straight possessions without a score. Central on a long field goal drought in the first half, and we'd still be close, although Paige Palkovich gets on the score column with her first field goal. And I think head coach Paul Gates has to be very encouraged by what he's seen from his reserves, particularly in this situation. Zinvante used up the dribble, finds an open Willis. Willis doesn't waste any time getting two quick buckets on the floor here for the Minutemen. Palkovich gets bumped by Jones. So she'll go to the line with 51 we've seconds. We've definitely seen some fireworks here in this first half, Mike, from both sides. This is going to be a lesson in perseverance for both these teams after the first half that we've seen. Handling adversity, I think this is a good lesson for both sides. Uh, when, when things are going against you and it doesn't look good, how do you respond to that? Handling adversity, I think that's something that both, both teams are going to learn here early in the season. Now here's the other element to consider for the second half, the fouls. Yeah. Who will be in trouble? What will happen? Well, and if Palkovich misses, and it was, <laughs> it was Central's ball. Yeah. Schaff called it uh, Eastview's direction, but he meant to say Central. And I was going to say, how will it work out, and how are these teams going to manage the foul situation? Yeah, it, it, particularly Eastview. You know, I would imagine that both Beckman sisters and Jen Docker will be out there to begin the second half. Williams, quick three. I don't know if that was the right shot for her to take. Ooh, that was a walk. Yes, it was. Emily Young took some baby steps. You can't do that nope. in basketball. No. Nope. And a costly error for Eastview gives Central a chance to make this a one-possession game again. Let's see if... Willie Taylor has his team hold for the last shot here. I think that would be a very smart move for them to do that. Get it whittled down to a single possession here. Given how Central struggled from the floor, they've only made five field goals. I wouldn't be surprised unless they get a really clean look oh and a turnover. Trying to do too much with that. Jones, a freshman, a freshman uh, mistakes, if you will. Like you said, over pursuing. Chance for Eastview. Peterson can't put it down. Mayer, no foul. Yes, it was called late. It was. Are you 
Oh, boy. So we're going to have two free throws to end the half. Oh, boy. You can't like that if you're Willie Taylor. So Mara will shoot two free throws. With time expired. And after this, they'll go to the intermission. Well, it could be worse. You know, you, you look at where Central was in the early stages of this first half, Mike, when they were staring at a double-digit deficit. Uh, I'm sure Willie Taylor, despite not liking that call, will take this going into the locker room. 31-25 the score at halftime. We'll have first half stats and analysis, and uh, I agree with you. I think Central is the luckier team so far, even yeah. though Eastview went through 14 drives, just yep. with where everything is. Yep. So we'll take a break and come back with first half stats and analysis when we return. Paul, it wasn't easy, but you came away with a nice win against Centennial yesterday. Yeah, you know, we struggled a little bit at times. I wasn't overall very pleased with the way we played. Uh, but it was the first game, and you're just looking to get better, and that's why we do this tournament is to find out what we need to improve on. Being 2-0 and oh isn't as important as finding out uh, certain things about your team. Yeah, you know, and that's the great thing about this tournament. We can go back to practice next week and really find out uh, what we need to work on. You know, it is fun to win, fun to play good, against good competition, but the reason we come here is to find out uh, where we need to go from here. Your starters tonight are? Uh, we're going to go with the Beckman Twins, Alex and Amanda, Jenna Doctor, Hannah Shy, and Amber Mayer. And what do you expect out of De La Salle? Uh, St. Paul Central, I think they're going to pressure us. Uh, and what do you expect out of St. Paul Central? Uh, St. Paul Central is going to pressure, they're going to run up and down, and we're going to play that style too, so it should be a fun game to watch. Yeah, fun tonight. Thank you very much. You. Willie Taylor, it wasn't easy, but you came out with a victory yesterday. Yeah, it was a fun game for our first game of the year. Uh, talk about uh, what you learned about your team. Uh, you know, it's kind of different than what we've had the last couple of years. We have speed and we have size too, so it kind of helps. I mean, it helped us yesterday playing De La Salle. It was a pretty good matchup for us because they're long, and we match them with the height, but we have quicker little guards, and that helped us. I thought your team yesterday showed uh, a little more maturity than I expected, especially at key moments. I think that um, we're still pretty young, and I think that we will continue to show that maturity, I hope. But yeah, yesterday they did, uh, they got tough when we need to get tough. Tell me who your starters are. Um, same as yesterday, Betsy McDonald's the point guard, Jen Hills two, Marlia Getter Edwards is the three, Shadi Chapman's the four, and Myers Sayers the five. And what do you expect out of Eastview tonight? I think this is going to be a tough game for us because I, my team is so young, we really only have one press break in we have like two plays only and this team's going to be switching things up and it'll confuse our young kids but I think that we're athletic enough that we can overcome that yeah fun tonight thank you and community hoops is back continuing its coverage of the Pat Patterson Thanksgiving tip-off tournament we have the class B bracket final between St. Paul Central and Eastview Eastview holding a six-point lead over the Minutemen, 31-25. I'm Mike Peden. Alex Nagel will join me in a moment again, but let's take a look at the first half stats. For Central, Genvante Hill leads the team with 12 points. She leads all players. Six of seven from the free throw line. Raina Shero has four. Damiana Willis has four. And Shade Chapman has three. Jada Jones has two. Central, 15 of 17 from the free throw line, and that's why they're in this game. Eastview, not bad either, 10 of 16. Their leading scores, Amber Mare with seven, Alex Beckman with six, Amanda Beckman and Jenna Doctor with four, and Paige Palkovich with three. And we looked at the fouls. That was a big issue in the first half. Players in foul trouble, Alex Beckman and Jenna Doctor both have three fouls. And for Central, Marlia Gerwer Edwards and Jada Jones have three. That senior trio is out there again now for Eastview. Let's see how long they last. Mayor misses, and Alex Beckman brings down the rebound. Doctor is in the house. <laughs> you got to me. Well, hopefully, it's only a matter of time. Well, hopefully we don't use that cliche too much. 
That's six points for Doctor. Hill out to Chapman, and she can't finish. That was a great fake, too. It was, and you've got to make the most of those opportunities. That's a microcosm of Central's day. Only five field goals in the first half. Went a long stretch without making one. Alex Beckman can't bring it down. Amber Mayer picks it up. Can't clean it up. And it's picked up by Gara Edwards. Takes it herself, gets the swish. That's her first field goal of the game. And if Central can find some momentum, get some rhythm going on the field goals, they've got a chance to upset Eastview. But a foul, is that on Gara Edwards? I believe it is. It is Jada Jones going in. Gara Edwards now with four. Wow. That's one of your starters. Mayer, no good. Well, one thing's changed with Eastview. They're getting the offensive boards now with the starters back in. Can't get the bank. And the rebound by Hill. Finds Chapman. Pass was slightly deflected, but Chapman puts it in anyway. Yeah, she finished that one. Very athletic move from Chapman there. Over and back. You're right. Alex Beckman turns it over. And another costly Eastview mistake. And Paul Gates not happy about that one either. Especially the over the back calls, the backcourt violations. Yep. Those are the worst. Yep. But yeah. Eastview, go ahead. I was just saying that they not only make a get a coach in there, they take a player think twice too. And Maya Cyrus makes Eastview pay, but Eastview, very experienced team, a lot of veterans on this squad, the three senior captains. They won't let a mistake like that affect them for long. That one's off Amanda Beckman there. Central with a chance to tie. They did take the lead briefly in the first. I had to think, Mike, that the team that got off the, to the best start in these first three or four minutes of the second half would have the best shot of coming out on top. There's always that window, the first five minutes of each half, the last five minutes. It's always the big window everyone talks about. Yep. Central showing a little patience here. They're an aggressive team. They like to run, have a fast tempo, but showing a little reserve this time. And it pays off for Genvante Hill, who gets the jumper. And we're knotted up at 33. 14 points for Hill. The cousin of Minneapolis South standout and Ohio State guard Taylor Hill has had a big couple years. All right, a big freshman year for Ohio State. Count it, Alex Beckman. And Beckman completes the three-point play. And we mentioned in the first half when Willie Taylor got ejected uh, in their meeting with Eastview at the Hopkins tournament and Gunderson came in. Well, Gunderson was a head coach for many years. Cyrus in the corner, bullseye. Wow. wow. Talk about ice water in your veins. That was a prime example there. Finish up that point. Gunderson coached a long time at Harding and then at Johnson for a few years, the winningest coach in St. Paul City Conference history in total victories. Oh Chapman my with the goodness. block. She didn't know she was coming. Oh, she came out of nowhere to swap that one away. And as Chapman grows over the years, 
She's going to be an excellent force in the post, perhaps oh. reminiscent of what Georgie Jones did inside yep. a few years ago. And she walked. Traveling call on Beckman. The that's mistakes the are piling up for Eastview. Yeah, and that's the second time she did that when she took that extra step before she started dribbling. Trying to do too much. Hill thought about a three, but instead goes out to Jones for three. That doesn't fall, and the rebound by Doctor. We're tied at 36. Doctor loses it. Jones can't get there. Peterson short on the shot, and it's picked up by Hill, who finds Chapman one-on-one. -on -one. She can't handle it either. Alex Beckman with the steal. Boy. And a blocking foul on Hill. That will be number three for Genvante. Somewhere along the line in that craziness, he knew there was going to be a cornfield, and there was. <laughs> Had to sneak in a reference to Iowa, didn't you? <laughs> Peterson, spin move. Draws a foul. Actually, I was thinking in railroad terms, but that's okay. <laughs> Fouls on Cyrus, that's her third. And Central piling up the fouls early, but usually when it comes to sports, basketball included, fouls tend to even out as the game goes on. There's no method to the madness, it just happens. Beckman short on the layup, rebound by Hill. Bounce pass to Cyrus for the corner, not that time. And Eastview was the last to touch it. Such a little lucky there. I thought Chapman might have been the last one to get her hands on it. Tough angle from here. It is, it is. Cyrus again. Oh, Binks it this time. Eight points for Cyrus By and Kate. Central with their largest lead of the game. You were about to say? I was just going to say she got it from one quarter and she said when she couldn't get it from there, she'll try the other corner and she scored. That's taking the reverse angle uh, camera shot to a whole new level. We've got a timeout on Eastview as they're trailing by three with 12.17 to go in the first. It's like we said, though, Central was doing... A great job at staying with Eastview, and if their shots could start falling as they're starting to now, this is where they can make their push. And this is where Paul Gates has got to get his team settled down, a little calm down, go back to what worked for him early. Central, we should know, tied for their largest lead of the game. They led early. Oh, wait, now I'm making out the notes here. It's the first lead of three or more points, their largest lead of the game. It's still one possession game, though, as they take the court. We'll talk more about Pat Patterson in a second and why this tournament is named in her honor. Likely at the next time out. Now, if Central could come out it's still early, but if they do come out and finish this weekend winning their two games, Hill for three. Bullseye. Central's looking that way. Yep. And all of a sudden, those perimeter shots that weren't falling earlier for Central are starting to go in now. They stayed with Eastview from the free throw line in the first half, and now they're taking advantage of Eastview's struggles in the second. Eastview went into the locker room with a six-point lead. Yep. And since then, it's a 17-5 run. I think Eastview just has to retain their composure here, bring that pressure defense. You know, they forced Central into a lot of turnovers early, and if they keep doing that, they should be okay. Willie Taylor called timeout furious about the near five-second call, so let's talk more about Pat Patterson and why this tournament is named in her honor. For more than 50 years, Patricia Garlett's Patterson touched the lives of every member of the Hamlin community. 
As a health and physical education professor, her energy, enthusiasm, and no-nonsense attitude were legendary. Her love for Hamlin, its students, alumni, faculty, and staff pervaded every aspect of her life. Pat also cared about Hamlin University's future. Through her estate, she provided the league gift for the expansion and renovation of the university's recreation and athletic fields, named the Pat Patterson Fields. All those who participate in the Pat Patterson Memorial Thanksgiving tip-off tournament pay a fitting tribute to a Hamlin hero. And Central showing some heroics here, but there's still a lot of time left. Anything can happen. Like that, a turnover. Not sure what she did there, Mike. Five second call. Five second call. So they get bailed out of one five second call. Ball looked into another. Hill with the steal and a breakaway on the left side. Ah. Gets the layup. She has just really started to come on here in the second half, Mike. She scored 20 in the yesterday's game. She has 19 and a steal by McDonald. Here she comes, finds Cyrus, and Cyrus with the layup. The run continues for Central. All of a sudden it's And a Paul Gates is going to call timeout. Sorry, I jumped on you. I was you. just going to say it's a 10-point advantage now. Now Gates backs off the timeout because of the run. No layup. And Palkovich cleans up the mess, finally stops the bleeding. Gates was ready to call timeout, backed off, and it paid off for the Lightning. Jones weaves through the hole. Can't get the layup. Gets her own rebound. No foul. Doctor with the strip. She has numbers. Drives and gets the layup. Now what a smart play by Jen Doctor on that. She initially wanted to come down all the way. She stopped, found another opening, and then finished. What have we said about patience? It works. Chapman. Backs off to Cyrus from the corner. No. Jones races in for the rebound. And remember, Gates was ready to call timeout. Yeah, he was. Eastview was down by 10. He backed off. Since then, they made it a six-point game. McDonald, tough oh. shot, and it falls. Her first field goal of the game. Now that offense we were hoping to see in the first half coming to life here. What a great outlet pass. It's important for Eastview here to remain there, retain their composure, not get frustrated, try to do something too much or too stupid. You saw what Palkovich did, and it gave Amanda Beckman a bucket. Yep. Hill fell for it, and she goes to the outlet. But now Central looking for their outlet. Chapman can't finish. It's a six-point margin, 48-42, as we enter the halfway point of the second half. Palkovich is open. But instead, goes back, and now Beckman driving, and one! And this is exactly where that senior trio of the Beckman sisters and Jen Docker have got to show their worth, and that was a prime example right there. Three-point play and a chance to make this a one-possession game again. Remember, Getz was very close to calling a timeout. In fact, he had the tee ready. He was ready to yell it to the officials. He yep. backs off, and what happens? Eastview catches some fire of their own. Yep. It's very strange how the game of basketball can work sometimes. Those, those runs, like you, were so, like you were saying earlier. Right? And this may not be the first time these two teams could face each other this season. Both teams are slated in the Dick's Sporting Goods Holiday Tournament at Hopkins, which we'll have for you on Community Hoops. And if that were to happen, what a treat that would be. And Beckman gets a three-point play. They're in different ends of the bracket. Amanda Beckman got her hand on that and knocked it out. If you're curious, Eastview will get Maple Grove in the first round. St. Paul Central will get Eden Prairie. That's going to be a tough match with Chris Carr, the former NBA player, taking over as coach of the Eagles. Shiro, no basket, but free throws coming. And until then, Eastview had not committed a foul in this half. Paul Gates very aware of the foul trouble he had from the Beckman sisters and Jim Doctor. Wanted to minimize that as much as possible. Doing that so far, but that's something to keep in mind. The three-point play that I thought was made did not happen, and so it's still a two-possession game for Central with Cheryl making both free throws. Cheryl has six points, all from the free throw line. 
I suppose at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how you get your points if you uh, capitalize yeah. on your chances. Yep. 50 to 45 is the score. Doctor. No good on the layup. And McDonald with the board. Running down, looking for Gara Edwards. And she loses the ball. Yep. A little out of control there, Mike. Central's got speed. They are a quick team, but sometimes speed can hurt you. Yep. That's what Willie Taylor credited their victory over De La Salle. The speed being a little quicker than the Islanders on the floor. Mayer for three. That would have been big. Chapman with the board. She has numbers. Will she drive? Will she pass? She drives and scores. Seven points for Chapman. Let me ask you this. How many folks thought Central would end their first weekend 2-0? They have a chance to do that here. Probably not a lot. Even the coach wasn't thinking that until yesterday's win. Foul on Central. That's their last to give. Eastview still has five. This is where the Lightning could make a run. Yep, yep. 7.49 left. This is where you'd want to do it down by seven. And you have both the Beckman sisters on the floor and Jen Docker. Amanda Beckman misses the front end. The trainer is taking a look at Maya Cyrus, who got a couple threes this half. She has eight points, and so that's one less option for Willie Taylor to use. I'm not sure what Cyrus might have done there, Mike. Well, our eagle eye, Tony Gear, is on it. He will provide us details and will relay them for you as they come in. They're retaping her ankle. Ah. Beckman gets the back end. Left ankle they're retaping. Cuts the lead to six. Hill in trouble, works out of coverage, drives, and goes to the line. I'll tell you this, you have not covered a game or gotten the experience of covering one until you work alongside Tony Gear. <laughs> Hill at the line. She's done great so far in this game from the free throw line. And well, you know, That's she, not her strong suit normally. You know, and she's created those opportunities, those slashes, and drives to the basket. And I jinxed her. I brought that up and I jinxed her. I'm going to get an angry letter from Central now. Amanda Beckman. Wow, what a nice, what a nice move and finish by Amanda Beckman. 11 points for Beckman. It's still anyone's game. Five points. And Hill gets draws the foul. Who's it going to go on? I think number 10, Amanda Beckman. They call it on Alex. Oh, they did. And I believe that's her fourth. Oh, boy. They don't get the sub in in time. Alex has to be careful. One more and she's disqualified. Gara Edwards. Tough shot on a double team. And Amanda Beckman picks up the rebound. Alex. Finish the right side is the strong side. And Betsy McDonald lost her balance, turns it over. Wow. Wow. Uncharacteristic mistake there from Betsy McDonald. That's something you don't see often. Leaning over, inbound violation is the official term for it if you're keeping score. You rarely see that. Yeah. There's another foul, on, this time on Javonta Hill. And that's her fourth. So all of a sudden, things getting very critical on both sides. Key players picking up four fouls. And Eastview in the bonus. They're only down three. Betsy McDonald will take a seat. Well, this game's had everything. <laughs> it sure has. 
everything, and I truly mean everything. It's had your rough go stretches. It's had your grinding out periods. It's had your seamless motions, your graceful shots. And Runs. And sometimes not so graceful shot. Yes. In the game is Burton for St. Paul Central. Oh, Loses wow. the ball. Beckman, that will drive. She can't finish. And here comes the ball. And it crashes into the laptop. Laptop still working. We held our breath for a moment. Great steal though by Amanda Beck who just couldn't quite finish. That's the first time the ball's come over in this direction today. Yesterday it felt like I had to wear body armor. Burton loses it, and she does lose it to Doctor. Eastview, many chances here. They haven't been able to finish. And again, but with the rebound and the cleanup is Amanda Beckman. That senior leadership, yep. the three captains, exactly. Exactly. three nine five GPA. They're bright in the classroom. They're bright on the court. And another steal. Elliott one on one, and it's stripped away by Hill. Great defense. I have a feeling these last five and a half minutes are going to be very, very, very exciting. And this excitement continued for both these teams on Saturday. Eastview will be in the main court for the girls' tip-off classic, hosted by the breakdown at Hopkins. They have the second game following Providence Academy and Bram. For the lead, no good. Chapman picks it up. And St. Paul Central takes on Maranatha Academy. I'll be covering Orno Eastview as I will be on the main court for all seven of those games, including the boys' match between Hopkins and Lakeville North. Great day for basketball. Always an event I love to go cover. The ball will stay with Central. Breakdown tip-off classic. I love covering those events. It's only one game, so no tournament atmosphere, but they always find great matchups. Oh. You'll get a great game from start to finish. They do a great job at picking those matchups. We had some great ones last year, but Nelson St. Margaret's barely edged out Minneapolis South. Definitely some matchups that'll make your mouth water for sure. And Minneha Academy, they got crushed by Kennedy as Central barely escapes a five second call, but it doesn't matter, Jenna Doctor picks off the pass. Five minutes left. Doctor! We'll have to get the lead from the free throw line. To finish up that point, Minnehaha Academy got crushed by Bloomington Kennedy in the breakdown tip-off classic. And they came back to win the two-way state title. <laughs> no one would have thought Minnehaha Academy would pull it off. No. I believe that fall was on Javante Hill. It is. And that's it for her, would it not be? <laughs> or a win. We're getting an official word. Foul was not on Hill, was on Garrett Edwards. Okay. All right. Which was her fifth, so she's done. Okay. Only two points. Eastview really cleaning it up on the floor in terms of fouling in the second half. Last time they led was 36-33. Doctor with a chance now to put her team back up by one. And she does. Doctor with 10. Who will survive this weekend challenge? Well, I tell you what, it becomes a matter of survival now for both teams. Hill traveling. This is this is where you know, when you get these tight games and your, your competition is top flight, this is where the good the queen usually rises to the top. And this may not be the last time these two teams meet this season. Of course, you can catch me covering the 
tip-off classic. I'll cover the final two days after I cover the Richfield tournament over the holidays. One point lead for Eastview. And Jenna Doctor calling an audible and a timeout. Now remember, we pointed this out before. We'll point it out again. 4-0-1 to go. Central went on a 13-0 run in that big run in the second half. Paul Gates was this close to calling a timeout. He had the signal ready. He was ready to make the call. And since then, is who's in front. Yeah, they, they like I said, they managed to we, we, uh, retain their composure. They didn't get shook up. You know, they battled back. And now they're up by one. And now it just becomes a matter of survival. It becomes who's going to make the smart plays? Who's going to step up? You know, and if I were Eastview, I would be let Paul Gates, I would be looking at my senior trio, Jen Docker, and the Becker sisters. Those those three, one of those three have got to step up and do something big in these last few minutes. An 18-7 run for Eastview has allowed them to get the lead back by one with 401 to go. And Willie Taylor, on the other hand, he's already lost the services now of Mariah Garrett Edwards. And also, with Jim Bonte Hill now with four fouls, she's got to be very careful in what she does. Central hasn't won a Pat Patterson tournament since 2006. Back in the days of Angel Robinson. Robinson Black, well, that was the superstar team. And who can forget that? Not many. Eastview now killing some clock with a one-point lead. They can do that. They will not attack. Cyrus back on the floor. They will not attack until they like what they see. They're going to make Central work for it. And they'll reset. Good patience here by the Lightning Mike. Well, they theoretically could run the clock out. They're definitely going to work for a good shot. You can count on that. Either that or I think they're going to wait to see if Central will make the move first. Seeing if that younger team will over pursue and give them an open lane. Central's not biting, but someone's going to have to make a move at some point. Central trailing by one. As Eastview's just passed the ball around for over a minute. Central remaining very patient, not wanting to bite just yet. Who will bite first? Someone has to. Yeah, I thought that was going to be, but... <laughs> for a guy, I'm a fan of up-tempo, fast-paced, and I like the shot clock, too. This is trying. Well, this is a chess match here, all of a sudden. And that's the beauty of it, too. You know, yep. who's going to come out of this chess match? Yep. Now we have the five-second call. Eastview, they... <laughs> Got rid of it in time. Now they go for the layup. No good. And the ball will go to Central. So patience pays off. Well, you know, and I thought Cassidy Peterson may have gone for that shot a little too soon. I, I guess she found, she thought she had an opening that didn't work out. Now Central with the chance. No shot clock, of course, so they don't have to hurry. Hill going for the lead, oh. too strong. Jones over the backboard. Unfortunate there for St. Paul Central. Mike. Well, Tony called it a gutsy call for Eastview to just delay with a one point lead, yeah. seeing if Central would move first. And here they go again. I don't disagree with it. It's like you have the lead. Now you got the foul, it's on Hill, and, and she knows it. Yep. She's done. She's done. 
So now Central, if they're going to win this game, they're going to have to do it without the top player. Yeah, and they're going to have, they won't have the luxury either of waiting too long. Hill with 20 points, and that will be all she wrote today. bench figure out who he wants to send in to replace him. Hill had two chances to give Central the lead back on their last possession and she yeah, couldn't she put did. down either. She had a great open look too, just put a little too much yep. strength. And they're going to send in Lyric Williams yep. in the place of Genvonce Hill. I'll tell you, if East View hangs on, uh, you think Gates rethinks his timeout strategies and when to call it? <laughs> Maybe if his team's down, it's like, you know what, I'll just let them play it out. That was a great example. But no free throw, jump ball, and the Fresh possession throw. arrow to Central. Yep. Well, that was a big miss there, too. It was a one and one situation for Eastview. They still have three fouls to give. Yeah. I mean, they're up by one, but if they need to, they can't stop the clock and stop Central from setting something up. The question is now, if you're St. Paul Central, how long do you wait to make, to make that slash of the basket? Not very long, ooh. I agreed with Cyrus. If you find an open look, you get a chance, you go for it. The longer you wait, the less time you may give yourself if you don't get it to work. Cyrus goes to the line, which stops the clock. And we're tied. Cyrus quietly set 11 points this game. And she missed some time as when they retaped her ankle. She misses the second. Now we're tied. Now Eastview has another choice to make. They could delay the last time. They were up by one, but now they're tied. They can't delay this time. I think they're going to embark on that same strategy here, Mike. Well, right. But they can't delay forever. But the next foul puts them in a double bonus. The question is, when does Eastview make the move? Ideally, they'll want to make it and not give Central much time. And who do they make it with? I'm guessing it's one of the Beckman sisters. Don't forget Doctor. She has 10. Amanda has 13. Alex has 11. Alex draws the foul. Hey, for once, I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> And Eastview gets the lead back. Whatever happens, though, I'd say that was a great example of the senior leadership and the yeah. ability of Eastview to overcome adversity on their own, not yep. have to rely on timeouts necessarily. Yep. Yep. That doesn't mean he's just going to throw them in the fire. You know, Gates will never do that. No right. coach ever would. But uh, this is the second. And a over the back call. Eastview did have a foul to give. Okay, now things become very interesting. They You're still down. have a rush free throw. You're down one. And who is that foul on? They send in Elliott for the Lightning. And Willis is taking a breather. We're going to have a timeout with 44.2 seconds. Right call, kind of some confusion going on. This would be very interesting to bring in both Tony Gear and Kevin Anderson to discuss strategy. I, you know, I'm not sure if you're if you're St. Paul Central, you know, you've got 44.2 seconds left. You're only down one. I think this is where you want to get the ball half court, you know, work it around a little bit. You got the Beckman sisters in some foul trouble. I, I think if you're St. Paul Central, you work it around a little bit. You try to go for that good shot. Try to go for a drive. See if you can drop there. You don't have to worry about the three-point shot. You, you don't have to think of those terms. Only down by one. All shots are available to you. Yeah. And Eastview still has one foul left to give. They played a clean second half. How do they use that again? Obviously, yeah. they don't want to use it if they don't have to. Right. But if Central's going on a drive, if Eastview sees it in time, you know, maybe perhaps they reach in there, get a stop, eat a little more time. Yeah. 
all of a sudden this becomes a battle of strategy. It really does. It really does. And it's, it's going to be very, very interesting to see how both Paul Gates and Willie Taylor play this. And this is where it comes down to coaching and execution. What the coaches draw up, how the players execute. Exactly, exactly. There's no question on the abilities of the coaches. Taylor winning two state titles and Gates. McDonald's got to get rid of it. Ooh, that was, that that was, was close. close to a five second call. Lyric Williams oh. loses it. And that as a big hurt. There's no shot clock, so Central's going to have to foul now. How long do you wait before you foul? Not much longer. 22 seconds. And McDonald gets called for it. Eastview in the double bonus. I think that senior leadership is just showing with Eastview. Central with this, the younger team still trying to find their identity at this point. As they said, discipline as Doctor makes her first free throw. Discipline, but they have to get that cohesion together, working as a unit. And Jen Docker was the one, if you were East, the one you'd want to have the ball in her hands. Tie, well, makes it a three-point game, which means Central can, at best, tie it with a three. Either that or a quick two, but I think they're going to have to think of terms of the three-point shot now. McDonald. No good, that should seal it for Eastview. Guess we'll find out what Gates decides to do with his timeout strategies yeah, now. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to say what would have happened had he did call the timeout and brought his players in. Too many variables, but you have to think. They overcome adversity, and if they make this free throw, they'll lights the game. Well, they didn't make it there, but they still have a chance. And now Alex Beckham makes the back end. That should ice it. Eastview survives a big scare from St. Paul Central. They were down by as much as seven. Boy, waited too long. Traveling call, mood point anyway. Eastview will win the Bracket B final, and Central will go another year as a runner-up. 58-54 the final. We'll have the old tournament team for Bracket B. And a huge learning curve for both schools. Eastview overcoming adversity. Central the next phase and working together as a unit. Well, I tell you what, Mike. We definitely got treated to a great, great game here today. We were very lucky to take this in. Uh, it, Great learning opportunity uh, for, for both squads today. I mean, obviously, if you're East, you feel great about the win. Uh, they get some good experience about you know facing adversity and what they'll take from this. St. Paul Central, obviously disappointed with the loss and a hard-fought game. But, you know, as this season progresses, they'll learn a lot from this game. And, and going through being battle-tested like this, they'll take a lot from it. And if I'm Paul Gates... I might look at that playbook and change when I decide to call timeout. Yeah, there you go. There you <laughs> that go. That really was a key moment. He was yeah, ready to call was. timeout. It was. It was. And then Eastview went on that run. Then before you know it, they get the lead back and they survive a big scare from the team that upset De La Salle at this yep. very court yesterday. And these two teams aren't done. They could play each other again in the Hopkins Dick Sporting Goods Holiday Tournament. It's definitely been uh, very fortitious two-day period for the Eastview Lightning. And uh, it's not done. There's a couple of bracket C games that will take place in the evening once the Hamlin boys uh, team gets in their practice. Hamlin men's team. You can tell you've been calling games for a while when you start <laughs> the pronouns just start blurring into one. Well, one thing for sure if they weren't men before, they're definitely men now having to wait out for the bracket yep. B game to finish. Yep. So for Central, recipients of the all-tournament team are Shade Chapman and Jinvanze Hill. No surprise there with the performance from those two. 
think that's going to be the one-two combination for Central that they'll rely on to uh, get them a run. I would say St. Paul Central will be a favorite to win the St. Paul City Conference. Doctor and Beckman getting the nod for Eastview. Fun day. You get a couple oh. more games left. Be looking forward to them. Well, we'll have to wait a little bit, but uh, thanks again for everyone here at Community Hoops. This is Mike Peden wishing you farewell.